Friedman Modern Quantity Theory of Money. In the year 1956, Milton Friedman developed a theory of the demand for money in a famous article, The Quantity Theory of Money a Restatement. This was the title of his published article. Although Friedman frequently refers to Erwin Fisher in the quantity theory, his analysis of the demand for money is actually closer to that of Keynes than it is to Fisher. Friedman stated that the demand for money must be influenced by the same factors that influence the demand for an asset. Those factors which are causing or which are influencing the demand for an asset are also the factors considered for changes in the demand for money. So pride man applied the theory of asset demand to money. The theory of asset demand indicates that the demand for money should be a function of the resources available to individuals, wealth, and the expected returns on other assets relative to the expected return on money. Like Keynes, Friedman recognized that people want to hold a certain amount of real money balances. So, for example, if individuals have different resources or different assets, one in the form of wealth and others are in the form of, suppose, bonds, the theory of asset demand indicates that the demand for money should be a function of the resources available to individuals and the expected returns on other assets relative to the expected return on money. This is the basic formulation of the Friedman theory that MD divided by P. MD is actually the real money balance. Why P represent that there is a positive relationship between the permanent income of individuals and the real money balance rb minus rm it is actual the relative return on bond relative return on bond rb mean return on bond rm mean return on money yp represents permanent income or the present discounted value of all expected future income so actually permanent income it represents the expected average long run income. RE means expected money return. RB means expected bond return. RE means expected equity return. And the last one, PI E represents expected inflation rate. Because the demand for an asset is positively related to wealth, Money demand is positively related to Friedman wealth concept. That is, if there is an increase in the permanent income of individuals, there would be an increase in the demand for money. It means that the demand for money and the permanent income are directly related to each other. Unlike our usual concept of income, permanent income has much smaller short-run fluctuations because many moments of income are transitory. In a business cycle expansion, income increases rapidly. As you know that when the business cycle is expanding, it means income increases rapidly. But because some of this increase is temporary, average long run income does not change very much. Hence in a boom, permanent income rises much less than income. It means that there are fluctuations in income and permanent income but fluctuations in permanent income is less than fluctuations in income when the economy is expanding and vice versa during a recession much of the income declines is transitory and the average long-run income falls less than income means that there are sudden changes in income the income level falls but this fall is less than the permanent income one implication of friedman use of the concept of permanent income is a determinant of the demand for money is that the demand for money will not fluctuate much with business cycle moments he has used the concept of permanent income why 
because the demand for money will not fluctuate much with business cycle moments although there are fluctuations but these fluctuations are not higher as income so the fluctuations occurred in permanent income is lower than fluctuations in income and they have a positive relationship with each other an individual can hold wealth in several forms besides money friedman categorized them into three types bonds equity and goods the incentive for holding these assets rather than money are represented by the expected return on each of these assets relative to the expected return on money for example increase in the relative return of bonds or equity or money what will be the result there will be a decrease in the money demand now the expected return on money which affairs in all the terms is influenced by the two factors number one the services provided by banks and deposits and the interest payments on money balances both are very simple as you know that as interest payments increases the expected return on money would increase what people will do people will go to the bank because they are realizing that they, that the interest rate has increased now they are expecting more returns by keeping money in the bank similarly the term rb minus rm and re minus rm represent the expected return on bonds and equity relative to money as they rise the relative expected return on money falls and the demand for money falls if rb increases if this rb increases it means rm will decrease yani the relative expected return on money falls what will be the result the demand for money falls similarly this symbol represents the expected return on goods relative to money this is pi e expected inflation rate and rm means the expected return on money so the difference this difference represent the expected return on bond relative to money the expected return from holding goods is the expected rate of capital gains that occurs when their prices rise and hence is equal to the expected inflation rate now suppose in an economy if the inflation rate is 10% and you know that we are representing the inflation rate by the symbol pi in macroeconomics so if the inf expected inflation rate is 10% then goods prices are expected to rise at a 10% rate and their expected return is 10% when pi e minus r m rises when this term the difference between these two term rise the expected return on goods relative to money rises and the demand for money falls